so much has happened this week. The son of Oyedepo, who left the church to open his own church, and we witness the judgment by the Supreme Court. Also, another trending topic again was the issue of the Nigerian police force, where someone was detained and beaten to the extent that he lost one of his hand and was taken to the prison where he stayed for like four years before he was released, where he made his testimony at Brekete family. Now, one of the Supreme Court judges, you know, came out in his retirement to lambast the judicial system and calling for the reduce of power vested upon the CJN. Welcome to politics on the wheel with Jay. All this news that I just, all those breaking, breaking news that happened throughout this week, you know, these are the few of many that happened within the last six days and more 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 happened and more are to come between now and tomorrow although new week starts today being sunday so how are we doing happy sunday to everyone but basically i'm going to talk about the reaction from the the justice uh, of the supreme court who lambasted the judicial system as well as the cgn calling for the cgn's power to be reduced excuse me now you're talking about you know the southeast the north central that is no longer having a representative uh at the supreme court and especially the southeast since 2021 now what actually happened you know and no appointment has been made and he is even living and according to him we have northwest northeast south south and southwest of which some zone are even having three you know uh representative constitutionally you have to have all the geopolitical zone representative you know to discuss issues that matter now you understand how this judgment from the supreme court went because the southeast has been marginalized from every angle of this country let me not speak much hear him the conversation about the diminishing number of justices at the supreme court has become a refrain as I bow out today, the number is further reduced to 10 against the constitutional requirement of 21 justices. That this avoidable depletion has affected and would further affect the court and the litigants to state in the office. We are in an election season where the election tribunals and appellate courts are inundated with all manner of petitions and appeals. The Supreme Court is the final court in the Presidential, Governorship and National Assembly election appeals. Yet, there are only 10 justices left to determine these matters. Constitutionally, each of these appeals requires a panel of seven justices to sit on them. When a panel of seven justices is constituted to sit on a particular appeal, only three justices are left. Even when regular appeals are being heard in the Supreme Court, a panel of five justices is required to sit. We must not forget that the court, being the highest in the land, receives all manner of appeals from the court below. Presently, there is neither limit nor distinction to the manner of appeals that come to the apex court. Again, beside election matters which are seasonal, the Supreme Court dockets it is overflowing with civil and criminal appeals, some of which took many years to arrive. Most of these are still pending. Several have not even been assigned here in days. The court also exercises original jurisdiction. As the justices who hear these matters are grossly overstretched, unable to meet the demands of their owner's assignment, the litigants who approach the court seeking justice are left in limbo, waiting endlessly, endlessly for justice to be served. These, as I have said before, are avoidable. While I exit today, the North Central Zone that I represent ceases to have any representation until such a time new appointments are made. My Lord Honorable Justice Jembe Eko, who also represented the zone, 
retired on the 23rd of May 2022. It has been a year and five months now. There has not been any replacement. With the person of my Lord Honorable Justice Chima Santos Mwezi JSC on 29th July 2023, the Southeast no longer has any presence at the court. My Lord Honorable Justice Sylvester Mwanyi Mbuta, JSC, died on the 7th of March 2021. I repeat, 2021. There has not been any appointment in his stead for the Southeast. To ensure justice and transparency in presidential appeals, thank God we have been hard and determined. All geopolitical zones need to be represented. They are required to participate in the hearing of such appeals. It is therefore dangerous, or it was therefore dangerous, for democracy and equity for two entire regions to be left out in the decisions that affect the generality of Nigerians. That the Southeast has nobody representing them at the Supreme Court. Now you understand what transpired, why Peter Obi was denied. Even though he's not a president, he's not going to be the president of South East, neither is Tinubu going to be the president of the South or West. But then, this is somebody, and this is a region that have never tested that office. This is a region that, you know, has been marginalized when it comes to politicking in this country. But then, <laughs> what can we say? But the one that struck me hard, was the fact that he is talking about the corruption that engulfed the judicial system. We all know that the judicial system is filled with a lot of corruption. And that is the reason why even the judges, they speak from the both sides of their mouths. That's the truth. Because as I'm telling things that have been obvious, that you taking a decision, you know, giving judgment, you are not supposed to be sentimental, yes, we know. You are not supposed to be biased, yes, we know. You are not supposed to be emotional or follow the, 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 what the people are saying. But then, the evidences are there. But you could see what transpired at the court, and you saw what happened at the tribunal. And it's very obvious that some of those judges sold their, their conscience already for money. But the question that we needed to ask is this. Why is it that he never speak up? Why is that he never said anything all along? Why waiting until the time that he is resigning? I mean, he is uh, retiring or leaving the judicial system. Why? Why now? Had it been he came up with all this thing before the Supreme Court judgment, would have said, yes, somebody speak out. But then, he waited until now that uh, judgment has been passed. So many other judgments have been passed. And now he's, he's here talking. One of the stories that I never brought to your notice, or uh, one of the stories that I never made mention of, is the issue of the DSS arresting the former governor of the CBN, MFLA, and the release of the former EFCC boss, Brashid Bawa. We knew what happened within the last administration, within the last four years. And let me not even talk so much about that first. Let me play you the remaining video of what this uh, former justice of the Supreme Court said. This is not what our laws envisage. Although it can be posited that no one expected a certain person of honorable justice worthy, yet it has been two years and seven months since previous justice from the Southeast died and no appointment was made. The same thing with respect to the repl replacement of Justice Echo of the North Central, who exited nearly two years ago. Honorable Justice C. Baige, now His Royal Highness, the Emir of Lafia from the North Central, had earlier voluntarily retired. He equally is yet to be replaced. Also, it was clear of the mission that I will be leaving the court this day on attaining the statutory age of 70. It is then not in doubt that there has been sufficient time for suitable replacements to have been uh, appointed. These 
is yet to occur. When on the 6th of November 2020, the Supreme Court for the first time in its history got a full complement of 21 justices with the swearing in of eight justices, a little did anyone knew that we were only a few steps to unimaginable retrogression. As it stands, only four geopolitical regions, the Southwest, the South South, Northwest, and the Northeast are represented on the court at the bench of the Supreme Court now. While the South South and Northeast have two serving justices, the Northwest and Southwest are fully represented with three justices each. Appropriate steps could have been taken since to fill outstanding vacancies in the Apex Court. Why have these steps not been timelessly taken? It is evident that the decision not to fill the vacancies in the court is deliberate. It is all about the absolute powers vested in the office of the Chief Justice of Nigeria and the responsible exercise of say. That is it. So now, Bawa was released. Now they arrest MFLA. <laughs> in fact, this country now cruise. EFC boss. Uh, so many things happen within the EF. Now, the allegation of they found 500 billion in his custody. And where did he get that money from? Why are we not hearing investigation to that effort? Everything that they will sweep it under carpet. It went out voice me. Nobody will hear it again. Is that not true? So I hope that uh, the CBN governor is being arrested by the EFCC now. Don't forget that he's from South East. Huh? Uh -huh. I am not in any way trying to create some kind of sentiment or trying to say something regional or anything here. But let's come to think of it. If you are releasing Bawa, why don't you release the CBN governor? Where was Bawa arrested? Where was MFL arrested? Why were they not charged before, before the uh, nearest courts to them, as the Constitution stated? Why were they being held all the long without charging them to court? You release one, you keep one. Or you release the boat, then you have to say, now pick one. A lot of, you know, wuru is happening inside this APC government. And anyway, MFLA, he brought all this to himself. But if you ask me, I would definitely tell it to your face that MFLA did not do that on his own. He was acting under a backing, but now he's the one paying the price. But it would have been honorable if greed was not involved and he decided to say no to the power that builds, that we cannot trade like this. What about the people? That policy to design Naira cause a lot of harm what do you think remember police don't care about you before you jump off to defend them remember you're on your own thank you for watching if you're not this subscribe please subscribe to this channel share this video to reach more audience thank you